This lecture is Mechanics of Ego. The imprint, the origin imprint, the original imprint that we get for our ego is in the form of two beliefs. The, these two beliefs are what manifest our core fears. So basically what happens is that each child receives a belief from each of their parents. So if in my case, the, the imprint, the imprint beliefs were, now these aren't fears, they're not ideas, they're not, they're beliefs. That's really important. You'll see why later. The one was that I'm not good enough. And the other was I will fail. So what this does is <clears throat> it gives the ego a foundation. And so those beliefs are really what generate the multitude of fears which stem from them. If you're under the impression that those beliefs will come true regardless of what you do or do not do, that's a problem. So basically the idea is to take action that creates, for in my case it would create successes. What I would, what I feel or believe to be successes that counter those two beliefs. <clears throat> of course, on my way to engaging activity that I hope to be successful at, I encounter fear, which produces the challenge to have faith. Fear always produces the challenge to have faith. The path is at once the ego, and it is at once not the ego. The reason why that's true is because, so in other words, someone talks about illusion and reality being, um, you know, opposites. You know, well, there are opposites, but illusion is born out of your truth, which is always connected with the greater truths. The reason why that is, is because the ego inverts and reflects the truth all the time. So it'll always be there with a contradictory statement about the truth. It'll always have a contradic contradictory statement about your worth, your essence, nature. You know, and you'll hear it to be very negative. The important thing, one of the important things is to realize is that the ego, it's kind of interesting, you can say, don't take the ego personally, it doesn't mean to do what it's doing. And it's true in the sense that it doesn't have a will that is designed to oppress you. You know what I mean? These, so these two fundamental beliefs are really what allow us to continue to take faithful action over and over and over again because they continue to provide a they continue to provide a um, <clears throat> a contradictory illusionary version of of the truth of your truth of your reality and so let's say that these two beliefs that we've got every human being on the planet has these two core beliefs and they promote these, these fears. If you believe in fear, you must act out of control. If you believe that, you know, fear is real, there's no other op option, in a sense, but to live in a way that 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 those fears don't happen. Like I said, the ego is material-based 
it really means simply on a simple, simple level that you could let go of the ego and elevate your consciousness and connect to other consciousness is in reality. What 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 gets what there's the there's this there's this depiction of the ego in an elevated state in the in the tarot um, mystic tradition in one of the tarot cards and it's called the tower and it's a really interesting you know symbol of what I'm speaking about because basically what happens is that just as just as gravity acts on the ego the reaction to being pulled down will incite us into a state of wanting to elevate or raise raise ourselves above to counter depression so countering depression not only binds us to it but it elevates us through the ego through the illusion so in other words, if you're reacting to depression, a kind of depression that's not real, like not a chemical, clinical depression, but a, an egotistical depression, and you're countering it with taking action that will allow you to feel or experience excitement, to engage the excitement end of that sphere of the ego, eventually if you can figure out a way to continue to elevate and elevate and elevate in the illusion world and not encounter the cyclic depression that would come with it and recognize eventually that the two are related, that reacting to the one binds us to the other and vice versa, eventually you'll fall from a great height in the illusion world. But it appears to be very real. Falling from the tower in illusion, because we believe that the height, the elevation is real, we will also, when we encounter the depression, the, the fall, we'll believe that that's real too. So it's really important to say, to ourselves to take stock of what we believe in and what we don't believe in. And there are these techniques and principles that we can practice that will allow us to engage, to disengage with the unreal. And again, it's always service to others. If you ever have a problem with anyone or anything, the problems with you help other people to get out of yourself. The problems with you help others to get out of yourself, to get out of that problem. You see what I mean? There's no solution to a problem maker. You can, you can create a solution for a problem that your problem maker or the ego creates, but it doesn't mean that the problem maker has ceased creating problems. So the idea is to not live in the realm where problems are constantly created. I'm not talking about challenges. You'll encounter challenges in the real. You won't encounter challenges that contribute to spiritual development and forms of enlightenment in the non-real world. It, it just can't happen. So where I say, well, division is real. Division is real in the sense that you can suffer consequences from de being divided from others, separated from others in your true self, but it's not real in the, cell, in the sense that react to it take measures that will counter it, that doesn't work because you're, the moment that we, like I said, it's the moment that we take action to counter a non-real entity, we literally are binding ourselves to it. The, the other thing about the ego is that it's, it's confined in the sense that if your consciousness is standing inside the ego, the mind itself will only be capable of expanding or opening to a particular degree if you're inside the sphere of the ego. So it's literally literally a sphere that extends 
outward to the to the wrists. So expansion is limited. Open-mindedness is limited. Selfishness is ego. It is confined. We're not meant to we're not meant to consider the needs of others, much less the validity of those needs, if we're in ourselves. So don't beat yourself up because you're not capable of, or only periodically are you capable of realizing that others in your life have needs that must be tended to, why am I being so selfish? You're supposed to be selfish when you're in the ego. The way reality is designed is it creates this incredible contrast to our true self and our in our true self while it's within the construct of the ego. Because nothing I say is going to cause revelation. Not the kind of realization or revelation or insight that you'll have when you take personal, when you make a personal decision to find out if what I'm saying is true or not. In those experiences will you find, you know, Well, those experiences will be what has the power to counter delusion or illusion. The beliefs or perspectives solely from illusion. So it is possible to expand, it is possible to become enlightened. There are many phases, well there are several phases of enlightenment. Enlightenment requires expansion, so expansion is elevation, but you don't want to expand on the foundation of the ego. Life that is, actions in a human being's life that are, that are based on reacting to an illusionary foundation of I will fail, I'm not good enough, all of those actions in a life will create a tower of ego. That ladder is really um, precarious to climb. And you'll see people falling from it all the time. So what we want to do is practice principles of service, acceptance, forgiveness, charity, cultivate hope and willingness, develop a character so that we can actually stand below the illusionary foundation and connect with the truth. So the idea is to take the actions that are necessary to engage the truth, the living truth, the change field truth. And of course this threatens the ego a great deal. The ego, ego's foundation is based on control. Control is the, the primary means that the ego you know, uses to prevent us from being our true self. So if you believe in control, if you believe that control is protecting you, you'll stay isolated. Protection is fear. You don't need to protect yourself from anyone or anything ever when you're in the light. The other thing is God can barely reach us when we're in the darkness of the ego. The ego is dark inducing because it's always being pulled away from light. Light's elevating. So the two don't meet. Darkness and light never encounter each other directly. The consciousness can reside in an illusionary state and look into light and then look into dark. And you can take actions which will, and or inactions which will move you into the light or move you into the dark. But light and dark don't interact. You know, when they people say, well, why, do, why doesn't God take action on this atroci atrocity that's occurring here, this, this atrocity of rape and torture, etc., etc., etc.? Light can't enter darkness. A human being or a group of human beings are acting in destructive or violent ways in the delusion or the illusion of the ego, they're, they're, they feel, they'll, they'll feel quite justified in everything that they do. 
light won't be able to find them. They have to move into light. And the reason for that is, the reason why the light or God doesn't enter into darkness is so that, so that we have always the opportunity for development, for change, for growth, by practicing faith. So faith, again and again and again, will come up because that's the only thing that will deliver you into the light. It's important for me to convey that there's purpose in all the states of mind and all of the things that happen within and without us relative to our you know, spiritual development. So it's, it's really key. None of this really makes sense if we're not here to develop spiritually. Faith doesn't make sense for an individual. They don't have a need for it. You know, if what I'm saying is, is found to be preposterous or absurd, and I guarantee you many people will view it that way, faith is a non-issue. Faith is for lost religious people. This isn't religion at all. This is real, in my opinion. But it's not real to you until you encounter what I'm saying. 